Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Business Central Add-on Spotlight series. I'm Emily. I'm a marketing specialist at Savantis Technologies, and I'm so happy to be joined today by Bijan and Nick from Binary Stream. They're going to talk about multi-entity management in Business Central. So just a few housekeeping things before we dive in. Um, we encourage you to ask any and every question that you have for these two. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see the Q&A button. You can drop all your questions there and we'll be sure to address them before the webinar ends. We're also going to be using the polling feature in Zoom to ask you some questions throughout the webinar. Uh, if you haven't encountered the polling feature before, it's very easy to use and we're gonna announce when the polls are coming. And the last thing is that we are going to be recording the webinar for you to rewatch and share as much as you'd like. So we'll be sending that recording via email within two days and it's gonna be on YouTube as well. So I'm going to pass the torch over to Bijan and Nick. Thank you so much everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Emily, for the warm welcome. And uh, you know, you mentioned the the recording being sent out. I I fully expect uh, this to be very engaging. So I, I I'm expecting most of you to be rewatching that as as an encore presentation. I assume so. As Emily mentioned, my name is Bijan. I'm a partner success manager here with Binary Stream. We're a partner, a longtime partner of Savantis, and I'm joined by my colleague Nick Petrolini, who is a solutions consultant and going to be showing you Mem in action today. So. The webinar today and the spotlight series is, of course, about how you can handle multiple companies in the 365 BC. Uh, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, please, Nick. So we're going to kick it off with just sharing a little bit about Binary Stream, and then we're going to give you a high-level overview of multi-entity management, or MEM, as we like to call it. Then we're going to showcase MEM in action, and our great solution consultant, Nick, is going to give you a nice live demo. After that, we'll finish it off with next steps. So binary stream, who are we? So we are an independent software vendor, an ISV. We are a Microsoft inner circle, top 1% partner, and we've been around for a long time. It's, we've been a gold partner since 1999, and we intend to keep it that way. Now, Business Central is really our wheelhouse. We were last year the Business Central Partner of the Year runner-up with Microsoft. So out of all partners that have ABC practice, we play second. Now, the last thing I'll mention here is that over 30% of our staff are CPAs. So we're not developers making solutions for accountants. We are accountants making solutions for accountants. So we understand your needs, we understand your pain points, and we know how to address them as a result. Now, next slide, please. Now, of course, we're gonna be looking at multi-entity management today, but just wanted to briefly highlight in case it was of interest to you, a few of our other solutions here. So if you have any recurring billing needs, you'd ever do any deferrals, we have the subscription billing suite where you can actually automate all of those. If you lease or manage any property, equipment, assets, then we can help you manage those fully within Business Central. And lastly, if you're in the healthcare space, an end-to-end -end inventory and procurement payment system, our healthcare materials management might be of interest as well. Now, let's get into the fun stuff, multi-entity management. Now, we're going to kick it off with, with a poll, actually. I wanted to hear a little bit about what your, your, uh, your current setup is right now. So, I mean, would you mind doing question uh, one in the poll, please? So yeah, we want to know how many entities do you currently have? All right, I see some responses coming in. Okay, yeah. All right, pretty pretty good mix right here. I see. All right. Uh, can we share those results, by the way, Emily? Yeah. I believe they are sharing. Can, can you see them? Yes, yeah, okay, I can see them, yeah. Perfect. All right, so it looks like we have a really good mix here. So we have some folks two to five, some five to 10, and, and some 10 plus as well. That's great, all right? And we do have some some folks with one entity as well, so that's great to hear. And I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, MEM is pretty applicable for, for everyone, so. 
Great to uh, great to see that, and, and we're going to see that in action today. So let us continue then. So one of the things about men, you know, I you've you've seen these targeted verticals we put on here, and you'll probably the first thing you'll notice is that, well, that, that's that's a lot of industries. If I didn't know any better, that that seems like almost all the industries. Uh, and the reason that is is because men is probably the most horizontal solution. Uh, that that pretty much any ISV I, I, I've seen. It can provide value to any organization in any industry that has more than uh, one entity, so that multiple entities. And because of that, it's it's pretty targeted to to really all verticals. So regardless of you where where you and your business are, we can assist. Next slide, please. So multi-entity management, ma'am, what is it? Let's let's get into it. So MEM is a fully embedded solution built right in, right on top of the source code of Business Central. Now, what that means for you is that it's not a, an external solution. What it is, is right fully embedded, fully integrated within the ERP itself. So it has the same look, the same feel as native Business Central. Now, over the last 20 years, MEM is actually an ISV solution out there. Number one, literally number one. So we have over actually 2,000 customers. So it's it's quite popular, as, as you could imagine. And the reason that is, is because if you have multiple entities, you know that, and let's say you're currently on Business Central, or, or let's say you're evaluating a move to Business Central, you know that the ERP BC cannot handle more than one entity within the same instance. So out of the box, BC cannot handle, you cannot manage, you cannot work within multiple entities within the same database, the same instance of Business Central. MEM allows you to overcome that. So what that results in is you are able to bring in all of your companies, all of your entities, and work everything out of one single screen in Business Central. So as a result, not only do things like your automated, uh, your intercompany transaction processes get automated because you no longer have to go in and out, go log in back and forth between entities, uh, do, do it twice as many times or many more times, depending on how many entities you have. So no more logging in and out. So all of the interco gets automated. Your consolidated reporting gets, gets automated because no longer do you have individual uh, business units. Everything is within one single instance. So you'll see it gets much more simplified. And also your whole ERP environment gets much more clean because you only have to have a single set of master records. You don't have to have duplicate vendor lists, customer lists, item lists. All of that gets nullified and eliminated. And the last thing is that because everything is in one single instance of Business Central and all of your data is there, you also get real-time insight, real-time reporting functionality, and you get full visibility into your business, which I'm sure is interested uh, is is would be of interest to uh, to most of you and your business. Right. Next slide, please. So, just a little bit about the infrastructure of Mem, and you're, of course you're going to be seeing this in action here. So, compared to Business Central normally, which is on the left, you have all of your individual companies, your individual entities. But with MEM, you have this shared master record. Everything gets consolidated into that one single instance. So everything is, as you can see, much more simplified. Next slide, please. Now, a lot of the pain points that we come across, and I'm sure Cervantes and uh, Cervantes comes across as well, is when folks have multiple entities, there are some troubles, especially when not using MEM. Consolidated reporting, for example, takes a lot of time because you have to create the phantom business unit. You have to uh, bring each each and every single, uh, all of your data, all of your info into that business unit. But with MEM, it, it really is very simplified. And you're gonna see that in just a little bit. It's, it's pretty much uh, uh, fully automated. Intercompany transactions, that gets automated as well. So no more wasting time on having to go between your multiple entities and log back and forth, go in and out. And also, because it's automated, 
no more human error as well. So you're fully covered risk mitigation on that front. I already mentioned, you know, the, the duplicate records, eliminating that, that uh, those data silos as well. And then we also hear things like a more security overall. Now, businesses are growing or are still in expansion mode or, or just say, let's say organically growing your business. You probably know that adding entities, but with them, it gets much more simplified. So that's another, another benefit there as well. And the last thing here is that your day-to-day -day processes just get much more simplified. So things like allocations, let's say you have something like insurance, for example, you have to allocate across your multiple companies, all of that gets streamlined and automated. So huge time saving, huge cost savings as well. Now, what are some of the competitive differentiators of MEM? Well, MEM is the only solution that allows you to consolidate these multiple entities and bring them within a single instance, a single container or database off Business Central. Everything out of one screen. So MEM allows you, unlike other, uh, other solutions, to do things like restrict uh, or modify your user security. Overall, your master security is much stronger as well. And of course, because everything is in a single instance, your transactions occur within this single instance rather than through multiple ledgers. So everything gets much more simplified. And then your overall upkeep and maintenance of the ERP system is much simpler as well, because you only have to do updates and upgrades to a single platform rather than multiple systems. Pretty, pretty handy stuff. Next slide, please. Now, I'll just finish it off with a couple, couple more slides here about how much simpler it gets with MEM. So anybody in accounting will know that consolidated reporting can be a hassle. You'll see at the top here, the process with just Business Central without MEM, and it's, it's pretty challenging. It takes a long time. With MEM, it's really two steps. It's that simple, and you're gonna see that today in action. And on the next slide, you'll see invoice allocation as well. Same thing, super streamlined, super easy, much more automated, and really huge time and cost savings as a result. And next slide, please. So with that being said, I will now pass it off to Nick for the uh, the demo itself. All right, thanks, Bijan. Let me just switch over my screen here. All right. Bijan, can you just confirm that uh, you can see a Business Central screen in front of you? Yeah, yes, I can, Nick. Perfect, thanks very much. All right, so thanks everybody for coming today and, and I'm excited to be able to show you this solution of multi-entity management in action. Uh, you might hear me refer to it as MEM as we go through here. So just keep in mind that's, that's what it means. Obviously multi-entity management can be a mouthful uh, as we go through the demonstration here. So um, bear with me in that respect and, and uh, let's get into it. So you've heard today Bijan kind of explain a lot of the functionality and, and the benefits that you'd expect to see with multi-entity management installed in uh, an organization's environment. Uh, and first and foremost, that benefit really is gaining the ability to manage all of your legal companies in a single instance of Business Central, rather than having to balance between those, have multiple tabs open. And when it comes to intercompany transactions and, and reporting, having to deal with the additional steps of accepting those transactions across those companies uh, in your business central environment. And so with MEM installed, you'll notice a couple of differences, of differences, excuse me. First being that when I go into my list of companies here, rather than seeing all the companies in my environment here, we're just gonna go see the one. And in my case, I have Cronus Canada Inc. But included in this, in this company, I have actually multiple companies. So click OK. That's going to be load. There we go. And how we manage the different companies instead. 
is through the use of one of the two global dimensions in Business Central. So you see here, as I bring up my dimension screen, I have company at the top. And when I jump into the dimension values, this is now where I'll see my list of legal entities. Uh, now this list, I have 11 here. There's no limit to the amount of entities that we can hold in here. The only limit comes with uh, the types of entities that you can group together. That limit is we can group the companies with the same home currency together, as well as the same fiscal year. So if there are different home currencies within your organization, uh, and by home currencies, I mean that hoarding currencies, of course, transactional currencies are fine um, to switch between those. And the same fiscal year, or if you have different fiscal years and different home currencies, then we have to group those companies together and still house those in different business central companies. But we can still bring that down from, you know, what maybe 10 to those different groups. So maybe it, it becomes two or three. But of course, in a lot of cases where that is common throughout the organization, we can get that down to one, which in my case I have here. Now, if I bring up one of the entity setups for these, I won't go through each of these. Of course, we don't have uh, a ton of time today to get into the, the weeds. I wanna show off most of the functionality rather, but just to show off the ability to have completely unique profile information for each of these companies. Um, we can have a default bank account for each of these companies, as well as different number series uh, for your different types of documents and, and really giving you the uh, simple advantage of being able to see which company is owning a particular document when you're looking at that number string uh, or that document type. But now let's get a little bit more into, not so much the setup. Again, I don't want to get into uh, the configuration and that sort of thing. That's of course something we can answer questions uh, about as, as they come up. But what I wanna show off here in the MEM setup screen is just the different types of records that we can hold security over. So now, as Bijan mentioned before, that we have all of our companies in a single environment here, we only have one list of master records. And, and that rings true for each of these different types of records from customers down to our geometries. Because those are all housed in a centralized location now, there might be an additional need for security. Uh, and that's the first step here that I wanted to point out. In which case, I can identify which types of records I need security over uh, from the perspective of which entities can interact with an individual record uh, and so on and so forth. So in my case, I have customers, vendors, and number series security, meaning that I want unique lists of customers and vendors that if I'm working in a particular entity, I can only choose from that unique list. Right? So while you may share some across your organization, you by no means have to share all of those. And as I bring up my master security, which is the second step in this process, uh, you saw me identify which types of records I want security over, but now we're gonna look at the actual individual records that I can have this security over. So you'll notice here, I have my entity and right now we're looking at my customers. But for each of these different entities here, zero to 500, I can have completely different sets of customers. And it's as simple as checking, checking off one of these boxes to identify that I want that customer to be able to be sold to out of company 200 in this case. And we can go through each of these and see that we can have completely different sets. Doesn't matter, completely customizable to the entity. Um, as well as the ability to pivot this if we wanna go from the customer and see which entities have access to a particular customer. And that rings true for each of these different types of records. We'll go through each of these today, but just so you know what your options there are uh, with MEM installed here, okay? And you might notice a little bit of a disparity 
right here. As I showed you the entities before, you might have noticed that I had uh, 11 entities in this environment. But here we're looking at uh, the fact that I myself can only see five or six, excuse me, in the uh, security screen here. And that's because we also have user level security. So just like we just looked at with the records uh, and looking at limiting which entities can use that particular record, we can also limit that viewing by the user to which entities that user can work in and run reports for, run transactions for, and et cetera, right? So if we look at myself as a user, Nick here, even though I am a super administrator in this environment, of course, I have access to these security screens because I am an administrator, I still have to grant myself access to those companies I have to work in. And, and the reason I was only seeing zero to 500 in that other security screen is because I've only given myself access for demo purposes to those six entities so that I can highlight that throughout today's demo as we go into a, a transaction and, and look at running a report as well. Okay. So, with that being said, the last piece of setup I want to look at is just the intercompany setup. And this is going to be the piece that's crucial in configuration so that we can automate, automate the intercompany transactions as we go through and, and have those do to and do froms for our allocations of revenue and expenses and, and other just general journal transactions. We can automate that intercompany piece to track that uh, intercompany do to and do from between your entities. And how we set that up is through our entities here and looking at a particular relationship. From here, in this case, I have my company triple zero as my originating and my company 100 as my destination. And here I've identified each of the accounts that I want to be debited and credited on a transaction that includes an allocation between these companies. So these, I have them alphanumerically just for demo purposes, so I can see them really easily where things are going and, and coming from. Uh, but these can map just directly to your chart of accounts, uh, however that may be structured. It doesn't have to be this detailed. It could just be, you know, your general account number, um, depending on how your your COA is set up. Uh, but this is ultimately going to be mapped directly to your chart of accounts and just identified at the account level, which are your intercompany accounts, okay? And now let's see how this works in practice. So I'm gonna bring up a purchase invoice in this case, but keep in mind as I go through this process, the same logic is going to apply uh, on the sales side of things, as well as your general journal uh, entries and things like that. So. Let's jump into one that I've already set up. And, and actually, before we do that, I'll just go through the process of, of looking at setting up a new purchase invoice. So in this case, this is just your standard Business Central purchase invoice screen. But you'll notice when I select new, it's going to ask me first off which company code is going to own this particular invoice. And again, you'll notice that I only have access to the six entities uh, I've given myself access to in the security rights screen. From here, we're going to select an entity that ultimately is going to own the payables for this transaction. So while it may be paying something on behalf of a few different entities, or maybe it's inclusive of, it, of the only entity that's going to own the payable as well, ultimately that header entity here is going to be where that payable resides until it's up for payment. So I've set one up already in advance just so we don't have to go through the whole setup of the, the header here. But you'll notice it's still everything that MEM does is not going to change the standard presentation and look and feel of Business Central. What it's going to do is just add a little bit of functionality here without changing the, the user experience. Right. Okay, so a couple fields. I want to highlight here. 
course, as I mentioned before, is in the header, we have the entity that's going to own the payable for this purchase invoice, company 000, as I've selected when I, uh, when I generated this new invoice. Everything else is going to remain the same. Of course, we have our number series, our vendor name, um, contact information for that vendor, and our vendor invoice number, as well as our posting date. You also notice I have something called an allocation template up here. So I'll show how that works in practice here in just a second, but just to highlight that quickly, what we looked at uh, just a minute ago with those intercompany accounts, the options there are to do it manually line by line as I have it set up here. If there's an allocation between these three entities that needs to take place, or if it is a transaction that's regularly occurring and you know the percentage allocation that needs to take place on a particular transaction, instead of going line by line and manually doing the, the amount that needs to be allocated between those companies, we can just have a template set up in the background and identify that in, on one line to show uh, or to tell MEM and Business Central how that uh, total amount needs to be split between those companies and have each of those intercompany lines generated automatically based on that template. But we'll look at it. That'll make more sense here in just a second as we go through this example. To outline the business case that we're looking at here, we're looking at a regular insurance invoice that maybe you're paying or yeah, you're paying on behalf of all of your companies, your organization, or maybe just a subset of uh, just a small group of your companies. So in this case, I have three companies receiving the benefit of this uh, insurance amount. And let's say maybe I'm prepaying this at the beginning of the year, or I'm just paying it month to month. Doesn't really matter in that respect. What does matter is the fact that 10,000 of this insurance uh, needs to be expensed by company 000, right? With 5,000 expensed in each company 100 and company 200 but I only want to pay the insurance company once. I only want one invoice. I want it paid one time and I want to be done with it there, right? And I want my uh, payables clerk and a BC environment to be able to reflect that in their processes here. So I've identified that here at the line level. I have three lines with their respective amounts included here, adding up to 20,000, of course. And just by identifying these separate lines with the different company codes, which are ultimately going to decide where that expense resides, I don't have to do any of the cumbersome you know, steps of doing the intercompany transactions as well, switching between those companies, making sure it all aligns properly, and then pushing it through. Instead, just by doing these lines, I can go ahead and, and look at what this posting looks like now. And you'll see I haven't done any intercompany finagling or anything like that. And you'll see as these lines get generated that not only is the expense accounted for in each of those three companies and the payable residing in company 000, but I also have the intercompany amounts get generated as well. And that's going to be based off the mapping that we've told them that needs to happen when these different relationships of these companies uh, are identified on this transaction. So just to give a quick rundown of what we're looking at here, we have the payables amount in our payables uh, account for the full 20,000. We also have the three expenses and you'll notice it's all going to the same account, but there is a unique identifier or not unique identifier, but an identifier of the company that is uh, incurring that expense. So we have company 200, company 100 taking 5,000 each, company zero taking 10,000. And then we also have these do twos and do froms because we need to track what's owed to which company. In this case, we have 5,000 owed to company 000 from each of company 100 and company 200. Right. So just by doing the line by line 
identification of which companies need to take on this expense. We've effectively done that step of tracking the intercompany payables and receivables uh, without actually having to do much because all that heavy lifting has been done in our configuration and setting up those uh, account relationships between those companies. And we can add as many lines as we want here. I mean, I can do the same thing just by if company 300 had, you know, another 5,000 that it needed to incur on this, uh, if it were $25,000 insurance invoice, it's as easy as adding another line, identifying the amount, quantity. And from here, we could go through that same process and it would add an intercompany transaction or intercompany lines for the relationship between company zero and 300 as well, and include that $5,000 expense in company 300. But now I also mentioned quickly um, before just the ability to, instead of going line by line like this, we can actually do the same thing in one line. And that's because we have the inclusion of this allocation template here. I'll change this back to 20,000 just to uh, reflect what we looked at just a moment ago. So these allocation templates, and I'll just bring up the full list here so we can jump in to see what it looks like. These are a tool that we can use now because we have those intercompany relationships. The tool we can use for those types of transactions that we know what the split is going to be between all of our companies that are included on something like this, like an insurance transaction uh, is, is a great example, but there's other things, telephone, utility, all these different types of bills that sort of follow a month to month, pretty, pretty regular or pretty standard structure between your, between your companies, right? So I can go in and set up these templates, identifying which are the percentages that need to be applied to the total amount for each of my companies. And again, have all that intercompany struggle of having to make sure that it's balancing across your organization. You're tracking exactly what's owed from and to whom, right? Now I've, I've simplified that in this way. Um, by identifying this template so that I can use this on a month to month basis when this invoice comes in. And I'm not spending so much time uh, going line by line and, and having to do that intercompany piece. I also wanna point out that we can add secondary dimensions here. So if there needs to be a split between something like your departments or cost centers or whatever dimensions you may have in your environment, we can add those here up to three of them. Uh, so that we can even do splits in the same entity, um, but just through a different dimension, um, like a department here in my example. All right, so let's go and actually apply this to the line. So here again, we're looking at a, an invoice for 20,000 that needs to be split between those six entities and those couple of departments and company 000 based on that percentage. And now when we go to preview the posting, you'll notice that it gets quite a bit longer, obviously, with the um, additional relationships here. So let's just filter this so that we can easily see the accounts. And again, it's going to follow that same structure that we just looked at in the last example, but just with more. And you'll see my process of getting here was a little bit different. So again, we have that payable amount for the full 20000 we have their respective expense amounts for each of our different companies here on the left side. And then again, we have our due to's and due from's automatically generated, always balanced based on, again, that, that intercompany relationship that we've set up in our environment here. Okay, so hopefully that illustrates the power and the benefit that you could derive from adding multi-entity management to your environment uh, at the transaction level, at least. Of course, the functionality doesn't stop there. We can also simplify a few more of your intercompany processes, as well as some other processes, such as 
doing a payment run. Right? So I'm going to jump from here into our payment journals. And what we're looking at now is, of course, how a lot of users in Business Central are going to do their payments for those invoices that are due uh, at a given date. Now from here, you might be familiar with the process of getting your suggested vendor payments based on a specific date and what's due for payment uh, at that time or at that point in time. And from here, we have all of our same options but of course, now that everything's included in a single business central environment, instead of having to bounce between our companies and run this for each of them at a specific date, we can do this in one centralized process whereby we can run this for all of our companies at once or a specific subset of our companies if you want to still do a one or two or, or uh, however it is that you do want to do it internally. That's all available to you. And again, you'll see I can't run payments for those entities that I don't have access to here. Okay, but I'm going to run this for each of my entities that I have access to. As well as I want to, in my case, pay each of these out of a centralized account. Now, when I say centralized account, that's exactly what I mean. Let's say I just have one account um, that's shared between my entities, but there could also be the, the fact where I have a different bank account for each of my entities, but for whatever reason, I want to pay everything out of one of those accounts. That's where this piece of functionality comes in, where I can either decide if I want each of my companies to pay out of their own respective accounts, or if I want each of these invoices to be paid out of a centralized account or somewhere in between. Maybe I want certain bills to be paid out of one account and certain bills to be paid out of another account. Here's where I can identify uh, which account I want these paid out of. So I've identified my head office account here, but you can see I have a full list as I bring this up and I can identify that here uh, as well. But I've identified in my setup that I want everything to be paid out of one account. So I have to identify an account here. And now you'll notice when it generates these lines, there's gonna be multiple payments that are due that are split between many of my companies, as you can see here on the left side. And for each of them, regardless of which company is, uh, has to make this payment, MEMS identified that I've uh, indicated I want everything paid out of this one account and automatically applied that to the line here so that I can easily get into writing my checks or paying these in whichever fashion I want to. Of course, we're still going to support all the different payment types of Business Central. We're never going to get rid of any of that functionality. But you can see how easily I got to this point whereby I'm just on one sing single process rather than having to do this for each of my six different companies that I have payments due for. And last thing I want to show here is just if I were to want to do this in a decentralized manner, whereby each of these companies are paying out of their own respective bank accounts, really easy to change that up. Only thing I have to do is go to my multi-entity management setup, flick on the purchase and payables, flick on this decentralized toggle. Go back here, yeah. delete these lines and rerun this process. And now we just have to leave this bank account blank. And now just from that quick switch, it's going to run those same payments that are due. It's not going to change that. But now you can see I have each of these accounts identified based on which company is owning the particular payment document. And these default accounts are something that we would set up uh, when we're actually setting up the entity profile information. So those can be changed uh, and reconfigured after the fact if needed.
hopefully that shows off a little more of the power of multiple and or multi-entity management uh, shows off how we can really simplify a lot of your processes rather than having to do it in multiple areas. Everything can be done in a single process, in a single environment, without the hassle of having to uh, match each side of the transaction between your companies. So, all right, but that kind of gets us through uh, the payment side of today's demo. Last thing I want to show is just the ability to run combined reporting for all of our companies. Of course, again, now that everything's in a single environment, we have the ability to run our reports for each of those companies that are included in this environment or a subset of these companies just by applying a filter on that global dimension that we're using to identify the entity. So you'll see here, all I've done is type in MAM and it's given me a holistic uh, list of all of the reports that are available out of the box with multi-entity management. Now these are fully inclusive of each of the business central reports that are uh, included out of the box. So we've rebuilt those to be uh, compatible with multi-entity management as well. And you'll notice if I jump into one here, uh, let's do the mem vendor trial balance. You'll see here, we can just run this report. If I were to leave this company filter blank, it would run it for each of the companies that I have access to out of that zero to 500, right? But we could also go into this filter and identify that I just wanna run this report for companies zero, 100, and 200, right? or anything in between. We can still go ahead and use all that business central functionality is sending it to PDF or XML, Word or Excel. You can also schedule these still in the same manner you would with just basic business central. Never gonna get rid of any business central functionality with the addition of MEM. It's only there to enhance it and add this uh, level of intercompany functionality. Sorry about that, did not mean to close it. Let's go here, select those three again. And now we can, I'll just preview this. Of course, I didn't specify a day filter, my mistake. Let's do that again. And the date, we'll run this for all 31, 22. And now we have the results for each of those companies included. In this case, in this report, I have those consolidated into uh, a single amount that's inclusive of each of those three companies. Um, but we also have a variety of reports that splits those out uh, so that you can see company by company with a roll up at the end, uh, what those particular balances are. Okay. And to show off that functionality, we'll go into our financial reports here. And you can see if I go into my P&L by entity, and we'll recalculate this. Two hundred. Go. I can go in and again filter these companies and have it set up to be entity by entity with a roll up at the end. I can do this for the quarter, for the year, for the month. If we go for the year of twenty twenty two and recalculate this. Calculate, now we can see each of those balances for each of our companies at the column level. 
for this a PL statement. And we can build these reports out for any type of column and row definition that someone requires in order to get this, this level of detail with a roll up at the end to help you in preparing your consolidated reports, uh, as well as just comparing performance between your companies, uh, if that's something of interest if, uh, for you at the time. And there you have it. That's a very high level explanation of multi-entity management. Of course, we could spend all day going through each of the different pieces of functionality that it does provide in a business central environment. But of course, within the constraints of the hour today, uh, we've looked at sort of a lot of the highlights and really happy that everyone's been able to stick around and, and see this. Now, uh, we have some time at the end for questions, so I'll pass things off to Bajan and, and we'd be happy to answer those for you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Nick. Great, uh, great demo. So let's, uh, I see some, see some questions here already in the chat and uh, feel free to drop in any more that, uh, that you might have. So one of the questions here is how many entities uh, can be integrated with MEM? So good question. We, uh, we definitely get that a lot and you, you might be surprised at the answer. So right now, there is no limit. Uh, we've seen folks have up to, I believe 1500 is the highest I've seen. Uh, I know 3000 is, uh, we, yeah, 3000 is, is technically, but we, we can go above that if needed. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's a pretty powerful, powerful solution when it comes to, to that. And uh, you, you could imagine, but at those higher levels, the, the time savings is, is quite ridiculous. Uh, if you just imagine having to log in and out or go back and forth between 100 entities or, or something like that. So good question. Thank you. So another question I see, can you repeat the industries that MEM works for? Yeah. So the great thing about MEM is it's really a very horizontal solution. So, it, you know, there, there's really no specific industry that MEM works for and, and because it, it really can work for, for any industry. Uh, because if you have multiple entities in, in whatever vertical you're in, it can, it can assist. However, I will say the, the more common use cases and more common industries we see uh, when it comes to MEM are things like manufacturing, long-term care, uh, franchises, restaurants, uh, that sort of thing, utilities. Um, so very, very broad, but would definitely we see a little bit more uh, traction in, in on those on those fronts because they just have happen to have they tend to have more more entities. Nick, would you mind assisting with uh, taking on this this last question here uh, that's just come in about mem reporting? Absolutely. So with the MEM reporting, do you have reports built that allow you to look at specific departments um, so that we can see, for example, as Department 90? Absolutely, we can. So yes. So like I just showed at the end of our demo today with that uh, in that financial report screen, we can also add secondary dimensions to that. There's by no means does that functionality stop at the entity dimension. We can add departments, cost centers, salespeople, even anything that you have as one of those shortcut dimensions, we can add to the column structure uh, in those reports. And, and, and it's really actually quite an easy lift of, of just playing around with the column definition in that case. Um, but to your question, really easy answer is absolutely we can. All right, so let's finish it off. So thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time and, and sharing with us today. Really appreciate you all being here, and hopefully you all found some value out of uh, out of the presentation, out of the webinar. Now, in terms of next steps, if if you are interested, if MEM does seem like it, it would be worth exploring, which I hope it does, you know, we're we're always happy to uh, to assist you. So if you'd like to learn more on your own, you can head over to our company website, pioneerstream.com or AppSource, 
or the best thing you can do is contact Savantis because they're they're experts and they're our long-term partners as well. So you can reach out to your client service manager at Savantis, or if you don't know that that is a slip in your mind right now, you can uh, head over to an email support at Savantis.com. So yeah, we, we look forward to uh, hopefully working with you and getting the chance to uh, assist you in the future. Thank you so much for your time, everyone. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Vishana, and thank you, Nick, for being here. Um, and everyone, look forward to that email with the recording of the webinar, and then reach out to us if you have any additional questions and want to get this process started or just learn more. Awesome. Thank you so much.